This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a LG dryer that is not drying very well. This is the electric version. It uses 240 volts. So I'm going to put my multi-tester looking for AC voltage on the two legs of this receptacle and I got 246 volts <clears throat> so I know it has the right amount of power. Sometimes the breaker is just off and you have to reset the breaker but the power is good so I'm going to remove the top by removing these three Phillips head screws. Sped up the camera here a little bit, take the top off and then there's one little Phillips head screw here on the back of the control panel. Remove that. We're going to remove this water container for the steam. Lift up on this tab in the back that out of the way. We're going to remove two Phillips head stainless steel screws that are behind there. They're, they're helping to hold on the control panel. We use a little standard head screwdriver to pry it off. Careful here not to break the plastic. We're going to get this pulled out of the way. We're going to remove two Phillips head screws from the front panel down by the filter. And we're going to remove these four screws here at the top. So I moved the, removed the control panel a little bit out of the way to, to expose these four screws at the top of the front panel. I'm really just trying to get this front panel off so I can get access to where the heater components are. So this is electric heat, so it doesn't, it has a high limit that may blow when it gets too hot, but it's not resettable. The gas one, you can just press a button on the high limit and it resets. On the electric one you have to replace it. There is a way you can manually reset it but it's a little tricky. We'll show it here in the video. It doesn't always work. Usually it's best to get the new part. So I'm going to take the door switch off of the front panel. I'm just going to pull it off with a pair of pliers. I'll lift it off of its little connections at the bottom. Get that out of the way. And using my multi-tester, I'm going to check the leads here on the heater, these three. And any one of these three that I touch one against the other, I should get the auditory beep showing that they have continuity. If you don't get the auditory beep, if there's no resistance, that means that one of the parts of the heater is broken, you need a new heater. This one, you could hear the continuity. So that points toward another part called the high limit that's blown that we have to either reset or replace. I'm going to undo this connection. I'm going to take the front manifold off. Just removing these four screws that hold it on, basically in the four corners. Here's the, um, the right side. This is the upper and lower corner. Now we can lift up a little bit on the manifold and it will come loose to lift up and pull back. Sorry, using the wrong term, not manifold, but bulkhead. I'm just going to get this, this thing out. This has the support wheels on it, support rollers. So I'm using a standard head screwdriver to pry out one of the wire restraining straps. This is hooked on to the part that we were just removing. Spit up the camera a little bit. Just gonna slip that out. There we go. So I'd like to get the tumbler out now. I'm going to reach in and I'm going to disconnect the belt. 
and then I'll take out a couple of screws on the frame up here in the upper right hand corner and that's so that I can separate the cabinet a little bit to get the tumbler out. So zipping out these two Phillips head screws, I'm going to lift out this part of the frame and I'm going to pull the tumbler out. Got the belt off already. Once you get the tumbler out, it's just really easy to get to all the components. You can clean up everything and you can uh, get to where the high limit is and remove it. It's also possible that you can get to these components from without without doing this disassembly from the back. You can take off the uh, part that hooks up to the dryer vent and you can reach in and do some of this. But it's easier, you have better access if you take off the front panel and the tumbler. So we're just testing right now the um, parts of the heater and then we're going to do the continuity test on this high limit. And this one I don't get any continuity. The one in the back I do it's the thermostat but the one in the middle the high limit this one no continuity so that one's blown and that's why the dryer won't heat. It usually overheats due to an obstruction in the vent tube often where the vent tube is leaving the house. So if you clean the vent tube, then the thing doesn't dry. We're taking out two Phillips head screws that hold it in, taking the wires off of it. A lot of these uh, high limit fuses that them down on a hard surface they'll reset not always sometimes you have to replace it but the thing you can try is to grab the fuse with a pair of pliers and then strike down on the round surface I'm just going to use another pair of pliers give it a couple good wax and then we'll see if there's any change so we use our multi-tester we're going to look for continuity and see if yeah that works so that did reset it so now when we put everything back together it will heat up put those two Phillips head screws back in so they got to figure out where uh, the obstruction is that made this overheat put the two wires back on the high limit and these are the little holes that you could reach through with your hands and do a lot of this without even having to remove the tumbler. Definitely harder to do though. With the tumbler out of the way, it's pretty, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. So we're just gonna do a little cleaning. All we're doing on the cleaning is just taking a wire brush and you could use a paintbrush, you could use a vacuum, a lot of ways it's done, but you basically want to get all of the lint <coughs> that's accumulated out of the cabinet area. This kind of lint is actually very combustible and uh, can cause a small fire inside the dryer. And every year there are tons of um, houses that catch fire due to stuff that's accumulated in the dryer. So whenever you open a dryer, it's good just to get rid of any of this combustible lint that you can find. All right, so we're gonna put the tumbler back in. To do that, we have to make sure that we've uh, separated the frame a little bit to give it some room. Push it in. Once we get it in, we can reconnect the frame. Put those screws back in that hold the frame together and then we can put the belt back on. So usually for the belt, once I get it over the tumbler, I'll lay down so I can see 
where the idler wheel is and I'll put one arm in on each side of the tumbler and I can get the belt to be back on the motor pulley. So I'm going to put the belt back over the tumbler. Now I'm just putting the belt back over the either wheel and then over the motor pulley. I'm going to pull the motor, the either wheel to my left and then get it over. And now I'm just spinning the tumbler to make sure the belt won't slip off. I want to do one full revolution. Now I'll put on the on the support wheels again, bulkhead, get them up on their, their little clips inside the frame. I'm going to reconnect this one. Put this little wire back on for the light. We'll put the four screws back on for the bulkhead. And here's the front panel. I'm going to put it on the little clips on the bottom first. And I'll hook up the lid switch again, or the door switch. And then I'll push the panel up against the frame and put in those four screws at the top. zip those in and then I went out later after putting it all back together and made sure that the vent tube on the outside was clear it was obstructed and that's why it overheated so once I got that done I started it up and it heated great and did not overheat so if you ever run into this problem you want to fix the machine but then you have to figure out what caused it to overheat almost always it's a clog in the vent tube and often it's the clog exists where the uh, vent tube leaves the house so i'm putting in those stainless steel screws and then the water container for the steam those two machine screws here for the filter housing. Hold on the front panel at the bottom. And then we'll just put the top panel back on and we are done. I hope this video helps you and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance.